Welcome back everyone to the channel. In today's session, I'll be covering three important topics. One is how to populate the current user in Paper Pickle field in uh, Power Apps. Second is how to create the cascaded fields using lookup columns, not just simple drop downs. And the third field, how you can uh, work with attachment control and allow only specific type of attachments. So to start that, I have already created one SharePoint list and uh, this list is having few columns one is person field which uh, we will be using uh, to showcase how you can populate the current user in that person field and we are having two columns lookup1 and lookup2 so that we can create a, uh, a cascading on these uh, lookup columns and uh, with the same list we will be working with attachments how you can restrict the simple uh, single type of attachments so let me start with uh, customizing the forms. I'm just clicking on customizing form. Okay, so I got my form open. So I'm just closing this pop-up and zooming it a bit so that we can easily view the fields. So first thing is how to auto-populate the current user. So for that, I'll be just selecting this card and I'll just unlock this because I'll be writing a few stuff on it so as uh, how how we can fetch the current user details so for that we would be using one data source that is O365 office users so just typing office 365 users and adding it to our app and uh, I'll just select the exact person field and just clicking on it so in this item selection you can see by default it's uh, showing that choices so I'll just replace this with the uh, my office user connector so I can use my profile so you can see I've used my profile and it still giving me some error because I, it, with my profile it unable to return the exact value for uh, to be shown in this drop down so I'll just remove that one and use search instead in the search term I'll pass user current user email and I uh, will make a search let's say on top 2 because I know I'll be getting that in top 1 itself so that's how I can have this in place where the selected items will be showing my current users if I just run it let me just set it as a new page so I'm just selecting this form and uh, setting up default behavior as new so that we can preview with what, what we are getting so now we are getting person but it's not by default selected you can see in the drop down we are seeing it so how to make that by default selected I would need to go to the person picker field again copy the entire stuff and go to the default selections so default selected item so I need to change that default selected item to my this search user so now it has started giving me this uh, my current username but if I just save do a save on this form this will not save my selected user or current user in SharePoint list so let me just quickly drag one button so that I can show you what happens on save so, so on save I'll just submit this form alright so let me quickly run it again I'm typing something let's say test data and selecting anything in lookup and just clicking on save now I'm closing it and would be my would, would open my site in a different tab so the quick way is to just click on click there and add it data so it will quickly open the site so you can see I have the record but person field is empty why because I did not my my drop down did not cap that uh, value intact so on the on the page load it showed me that yes the current user is being populated but while saving it's not having that context so how to do that so I need to select my this people picker field 
and in people picker field I need to go to on update or not this one I need to select my card entirely and in card I need to click on update and in this update I need to pass that value so how that value can be passed so I need to paste one formula so I'm just showing that to you so what it does have if a SharePoint form 1 mode is new then it should populate my current uh, uh, users email in this field and select this data card value and make that selected selection happen so this is how we can set the values in our data card value to when selected and it will keep the context while saving it so I'm just running it back so just doing a test now saving so I just save it let me refresh my list now we have that person picker field selected as set as a current user's name so this is part one how to select the people picker field with the current selection now we are coming to the part two how to make the cascading work within the lookup type of columns so for this I am selecting so I, let me just rerun it so in the lookup one field I am having this E1, E2, E3 and in two I am having few selections and at the back end I am having relationship among these lookup one and lookup two so I just I can showcase that to you so in <coughs> I am just directly going to lookup two list so that you can see what the relation is so lookup one this fields is being related to lookup2 with these fields e1 is e related to a1 e1 is a2 so sort of uh, a many to one relationship so now I'm going back to my form and the lookup2 column I'm just unlocking that too I'm unlocking this so that I can specify So that I can specify what the selection should be. So for to make that filtering work, the cascading work, we need to update the formula under the items. And that formula should be written in the values based on the selection of my lookup value 1. So I am just already pasting the formula. which So I am just pasting it. So now you can see this... Uh, this formula is having custom list should return the lookup value 2 under the choices <coughs> when it's filtered on the basis of lookup value 1 equal to data card lookup value and what that means is whatever I am selecting in lookup value 1 it should be filtered within the lookup value 2 so we are using two filters with one choice so this this was the plain choice field which was returning all the rows but and now I have to make a filter based on this condition so that the lookup value 1 should be matching with the uh, lookup value uh, selected which is selected in the data card 3 so why it's giving error because I have not added that uh, lookup value 2 has a data source so I'll just add it it's a SharePoint data source adding my lookup 2 list so now lookup to is list is added so now I got my formula working I'll just rerun it so now I can just type anything and in lookup value 1 I'm selecting E it should filter the data based on E1 so it's giving three rows I'm changing it to E3 so it's giving me one and E2 is giving me related to that so that means the cascading is working well for my this lookup columns so we are concluded with our part 2 and the part 3 is how to restrict a simple uh, single type of uh, attachments for example uh, my list should only allow the PDF so how to make that work how to just give warning there and there itself uh, so that a user should be aware that only attachments related to PDF can be uploaded over here so to do that I need to go to my attachment car this attachment control and I need to unlock my control I'm just unlocking it 
and selecting my control again and here there is a uh, there is a method that is on file add where I can add some condition to validate that whether my attachment is of uh, allowed type or not so for this I'll be using one formula I'll just paste that formula which I have so you can see in update context which is a, uh, updating one variable is a PDF so that I can use that later and what is doing is splitting the data uh, in a data card value uh, which is having the name of attachment and checking that whether the split with the dot is having PDF, PNG, image I, I mean you can restrict whatever you want so I am restricting checking for PDFs so when I am having that P as PDF then uh, this value will be set as true so that's how I can have that formula in place and uh, just to make that work I'll just add one label and uh, in that label I'll be just adding only PDFs are allowed and I'll set this label warning visibility as my variable is PDF negation that means if my PDF is true then that the, this variable should be invisible so that the no warning should be visible so I'm just changing the color of the uh, font to to red so that we can distinguish that it's a warning. Okay, so now we are good. So I'll just save it and run it. So as I uh, already showed you how to make the cascading one, I'm just collect selecting those. You can hide, you can remove these two data cards because we don't require it's just a lookup value. And attachments by default, so this label is appearing so that the user should be aware that only PDFs are allowed. So let's say I am attaching one PDF. Let's say this one. So I'm attaching PDF that label got disappeared. So it, it was a valid file. And let's say I am attaching some, let's say some image or PPT then you can see the label is appearing again because this is not a valid file so based on that uh, selection we can also restrict whether save should work or not so if, if, if is PDF variable is true my save should work and if it's not then it should not work so that's how we can have this in place so we just quickly talked about how to populate the current user, how to create a cascading drop down with the lookup fields and how to uh, make, um, make your attachments to work for a specific type of um, file types. So that's what we learned in this session. So I hope uh, it could be useful for you going forward. If you like my video, please do comment and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you.